All right, so the root or zero of a polynomial function is where it crosses the x-axis. Um, so we've got this simple quadratic here. Um, this is a polynomial because it's, it's a sum of um, terms where um, uh, the variable is raised to a whole number power or to the power of zero. Uh, x squared plus 7x to the first plus 12x to the zero. Um, yeah, so the zeros of that polynomial are, are right there. You can see visually. Uh, it's where, the, where it crosses the x-axis, i.e. when y equals zero, hence the name zero. Um, also, also known as roots, the roots of a roots of a function. Um, so, uh, one way to find those roots is to factor the polynomial and uh, into its linear factors. So, a linear factor is is a factor that um, is linear. Now, if you were to graph the factor itself. For example, x plus 3 is a factor of x squared plus 7x plus 12. Uh, if you were to graph that, that would just be a straight line, right? So, uh, so it's getting it down to where the x's are just to the power of 1. Okay. Um, so uh, don't worry about how I factored this. Um, that's, a, that's a separate issue. But, uh, uh, you know, but, you've, but I, you've probably done this kind of factorization before where, um, you know, 3 plus 4 is 7, 3 times 4 is 12. Anyway, if you were to FOIL this out, you would get x squared plus 7x plus 12. So these are the two linear factors of this uh, quadratic function, x plus 3 and x plus 4. And the awesome thing is I could set y equal to 0 because I want to know when y is 0. Uh, and because something times 0 is 0, I can pretend that each one of these is 0 and solve. So x plus 3 times x plus 3 equals 0. Sorry, that's supposed to just say plus. Um, and x plus 4 equals 0. Well, I could solve for x in each case. x plus 3 equals 0. Well, x must be negative 3 then. And then x is negative 4. And lo and behold, uh, we have a, a root at negative 3. Sorry, that's kind of a bad color. Uh, a root at negative 3 and a root at negative 4. Okay, so uh, you may be familiar with this this factorization of, of quadratic um, equations like that. Right? You factor it into its, its two linear factors, um, set all that equal to 0, and solve for each one being 0. Well, you can do that for polynomials that are higher degree than 2. Like, for example, this third degree polynomial, uh, x cubed plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30. Um, you can see from the graph that there are uh, 1, 2, 3 zeros or roots. And uh, don't worry about how to actually factor this. Uh, this kind of just focus on, on the fact that you can factor it and then use those factors to find the zeros or roots of the polynomial. So it's at each one of these equal to 0. Let me use the color you can see again. So x plus 2 equals 0, right? Because I want to know when does y equal 0? When does y equal 0 in this function? At this, at this point, y equals 0. Um, so x plus 2 equals 0. x minus 3, oops. x minus 3 equals 0 x plus 5 equals 0. These are all places um, where the function will be 0. Uh, so x minus 3 equals 0, so x must be positive 3. x plus 2 equals 0, so x must be negative 2. Um, x plus 5 equals 0, so x must be negative 5. Meaning when x is negative 5, y is 0. Well, as you can see, here's the root at negative 5. Here's a root at negative 2. Here's a root at positive 3. 
So a lot of um, so find yeah finding the roots or also known as the zeros of a polynomial will involve um, factoring it so that it's just a product of linear factors and you can set each one to zero and figure out where those roots are.